In this video, we'll break down the Linux file system structure so that the next time you open your terminal, you'll know exactly where you are and why it matters. Let's start with the root directory. Don't confuse this directory with the root, just root. That is the forward slash and the top of the entire file system. The root directory is the personal home folder for the root user, the all powerful administrator in Linux. Just like regular users have their own directories, the root account has its own space. This keeps the administrator's files, configurations, and scripts separate from everyone else's so things don't get messy or insecure. The word bin comes from binaries, which basically means compiled programs that the computer can run directly. For example, ls for listing directories and files, cp for copying, rm for deleting, and much more. SBIN stands for system binaries. While it looks similar to BIN, it holds utilities used by the system administrator or root user, for example, ifconfig, reboot, and fdisk. That's why most SBIN commands require administrator or root privileges to run. This directory is home to system-wide configuration files. Every major service or application on Linux will store its configuration here. For example, ssh network resolve.conf etc. Despite the name, user doesn't just mean user, but rather Unix system resources and holds user level applications as opposed to the bin directory used by the system and system administrator. Inside user, you'll find user slash bin for applications, user slash lib for libraries, and user slash share for documentation and icons. Most of the software you install will end up somewhere under the user directory. The op directory is reserved for add-on application packages. For example, commercial applications or special tools that don't come with the Linux distribution might live here. Dev contains device files special entries that represent hardware components. For example, a disk would be SDA, and partitions on the SDA disk would be SDA1 and SDA2. TTY represents terminals, and null is the famous black hole where unwanted data disappears. It's like Linux gives every piece of hardware a file you can interact with, turning devices into part of the file system itself. Both MNT and media are about mounting storage, but they serve slightly different roles. MNT is the traditional general purpose mount point, a place where administrators can manually and temporarily attach extra file systems. On the other hand, media is where removable media like USB drives, CDs, or SD cards automatically get mounted. Plug in a thumb drive and you'll probably see it appear under the respective user inside the media directory. The temp directory is short for temporary. Programs and users can store files here that don't need to last beyond a reboot or a short time. For example, when you're editing a document, your editor might save a recovery file in temp just in case the program crashes. Many web browsers also use temp to hold cached downloads. Next up is boot. It contains everything Linux needs to start itself up. The bootloader, the kernel, and supporting files. Without boot, the system wouldn't even know how to start running. When you look inside, you'll see files like VM liners, which is the compressed Linux kernel and init RD, which provides the system with temporary files it needs during startup. Inside proc, you'll see directories named with numbers, each representing a process ID. You'll also find files like CPU info and mem info, which show details about your hardware. But none of these files truly exist on disk. They're generated on the fly by the kernel. 
Similar to PROC, the Sys directory is a virtual file system that provides a live view into the system. But while PROC focuses on processes, Sys focuses on devices and drivers. For example, you can explore the net directory to see details about your network interfaces. These files aren't real files on disk, they're hooks into the kernel, giving you insight into hardware and its drivers. The SRV directory is short for service, and it's where data for system services is stored. For example, if your server is hosting a website, the files might live in the www directory inside SRV. The var directory is short for variable and it contains files that are expected to change frequently as the system runs. This includes logs, mail spools, print queues, databases, etc. These are all files that grow, shrink, and constantly update. Finally, the lib directories are where Linux keeps its libraries, files that applications can use for various functions. Lib32 or Lib64 is used depending on whether the application is 32-bit or 64-bit. That's it. I hope you learned something new and this video was informative. If you did, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.